Though it's six months after its branding, Turbo Camaro finally lives up to its name. It's Turbo Time. Alright, jumping right in here. I'm going to show you what we've got. We've got our GT35 T4 CX Racing Turbo right here. It's already mounted, but not obviously installation is not complete. You can see here that uh, it's mounted with the uh, exhaust out pipe, the three inch uh, pipe going down. It also isn't connected yet. I don't know if you'll be able to see that down there. It doesn't really matter. It's there. Uh, it is connected to the 292 manifold, the two and a half inch outlet right here. You can see there's a brand new donut gasket in there, hoping that's uh, able to seal it up. It comes down uh, from the previous video. You can see here there's been a new weld. We had to, to tweak the um, alignment a little bit to get it to go through. Obviously, uh, measure twice, cut once. It isn't working in our favor in this case. And going along here, you'll see that it comes right up and it goes into the square uh, T4 flange uh, just below the turbo there and that's all mounted up overall very sturdy I cannot seem to move it which is great I had to move some wiring here you can see here that the alternator wiring comes along it uh, had to be extended so I had to extend the length of the wires about a foot so that I can put them in a position where they're not going to be touching anything hot um, for now, next thing is going to be is the plumbing. I need to plumb water and oil lines. The oil return to the drain has already been run to the um, to the oil pan when the engine was rebuilt, so that's not going to be a problem. The fitting is already on the turbo. It's just a matter of cutting the hose and, and putting the correct length. The oil in it's going to come from this side of the block down there. That uh, brass distribution block will be opened up and another line will come from there all the way from the back of the engine right into the top here. Um, keeping in mind that uh, whenever you do a turbo install you want to make sure that the oil in is on the top and the oil drain is on the bottom because essentially there's a restrictor here that uh, just basically causes the oil to go in almost by gravity. Uh, I mean it is pressure fed but it, uh, it goes through by gravity and a small amount of pressure and then the oil almost just falls out of the bottom of the turbo so getting that in the proper orientation is important. And then from there I've got some fittings here. They're actually going to be banjo fittings for the uh, water and they'll come up and over. I haven't even decided yet. I think I'm going to end up having them come right to here. Uh, so I was going to do them at the firewall way back there but then I've got to go all the way around the engine and there's going to be tons of other stuff going on so I'm thinking that literally right here and just running over top uh, you know avoiding the fan and everything might actually be the, okay, I've got right. the oil line run here you can see that it goes into the top that's the restrictor uh, port I was talking about it doesn't allow full pressure of the oil to go through full pressure could damage the turbo so got to have that uh, runs along sort of behind the block and comes down into the distribution block there it's the same spot you get your uh, oil pressure line from so I just run under all AN fittings if you need to know how to use AN fittings you can check out other videos online maybe someday I'll get desperate enough to make one myself uh, either way we're gonna be doing the, right, water, the water lines are all hooked up you can see here I've got the banjo fittings just here and here uh, I tried to use them in a downward configuration so I could have done a different path for the hoses but that wasn't gonna work also I could have gone more towards the front but then hood clearance was an issue so going right there there's no issues with hood clearance and uh, the lines uh, do the more mostly stay out of the way of the exhaust going around and they go into the heater core hoses here just for like sort of that go to the water pump and you can see I've just sort of teed them off I got a series of um, hose clamps there basically the same tee on both it's this here it's a help brand or um, 47112 heater hose T. Uh, they're used uh, Ford Mercury, which pains me to use it on my Chevy. However, uh, that's how it works. You can see here it's a three quarter to three quarter uh, and it has a three eight inch uh, T pump coming off it for this uh, hose to the banjos there. So that should be good for that. We'll have to uh, test it all out. Next step is going to be make sure I'm just going to go and zap strap all the hoses out of the way and whatnot. It doesn't have to be permanent for now. And then I want to get the bottom of the turbo hooked up to the existing 
cold air side. The outpipe from the turbo is now attached. Well, sort of attached. I need to get some more clamps here, so I'll have to make a run to the store when it's all said and done. But as you can see here, uh, it's connected to the two and a half on the turbo. And then I've got a, uh, so what, this is reducer here, this coupler that goes into a three and then down. So the air filter was originally here during the original cold pipe setup, but now it's been replaced. And I put a 45, just a short 45 right here so that it goes right into where the, uh, the turbo is sitting. And I'm pretty happy with that setup. So other than getting having to get a few clamps, I'm, I'm good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and put a 90 on here and my air cleaner is now going to sit where the old washer bottle used to All sit. Right, the 90 has been attached here. I just cut a 90 kind of short here and then it goes around the corner and then the air filter now is underneath the, the fender here. You can kind of see it maybe tucked in under there. Yeah. So it's kind of hiding. It's going to get uh, basically the coldest air under the whole bay, I would say, other than obviously the radiator front. So that should be pretty good right there. Obviously still need a larger four inch clamp, I think it is, and a three and then uh, the air cleaner still has its old one. So missing a few clamps here overall, but not a big deal for now. Uh, next thing, I'm gonna pull the distributor and we're gonna prime it up. Turbo. So what I've got is just a distributor here. Uh, it's a distributor I've sort of stripped down and it's got a flat, same flat end as any other distributor. So that goes into the slot where the distributor goes and it's just a matter of getting it sitting in the slot for the oil pump. Now what I've got is just a bit, a regular bit holder that's been pressed into the end here. Fits right onto the end of the drill. And once we get that tight, we can now prime the whole engine, including the turbo, with the drill. I hope if I turn it the right way. All right. So I'm going to go basically turn over the engine or just run the oil pump with a drill and I'm going to be watching down below there to see if oil comes out the drain line on the turbo. That way I can uh, make sure that it's working before I go and start the car. There we go. You can probably see there that oil is dripping out of the drain line, so that means that it is plumbed, and I can hook it all up. So the distributor's all back in. Now, just so you know, I did actually, uh, I didn't keep in mind where I actually had the rotor one up before on purpose. I wanted to actually move the distributor this way uh, because I was finding that when I was adjusting timing, the vacuum advance canister was actually hitting my piping, probably because when I first installed the distributor, I didn't have that piping there. So now I've got it pushed over more towards the block so that I don't have to worry about uh, it bumping so much. I've set it slightly advanced. Uh, I'm hoping that that's going to be good enough for a start. Now I'll have to obviously do the timing from there. The next step is going to be to uh, do the various um, boost hosing. I need one going to the blow-off valve. I need one uh, obviously coming off the turbo going to the wastegate. I've got a boost control for that and then I need one on the fuel. Alright so all the boost reference lines have been run. It all starts down here under the uh, compressor side of the turbo. There's a nozzle. That nozzle then gets split. Um, half of it goes over to here. I've got another split and off of that T is the boost controller here, so it's adjustable to control basically how much bleed there is before it gets to the wastegate. And then the other line of this T goes around and then goes to the other side of the wastegate. You can see the two green um, brass uh, barbs there. There are those two lines. So this one here just essentially, even though the wastegate's adjustable, it does allow me to have even further control. If I want to go above what the wastegate is adjustable to, I can uh, adjust this to like see less air so that it opens later. But we'll have to see how it goes. So right now it's just closed up because I'll just let the wastegate do its thing. I think the uh, default low pressure is about 3 PSI. So I'll just start there and kind of work its way up. So the other half of the line here goes around through the front of the... Uh, in front of the radiator support wall and then comes around and back out to here. Uh, you can see here this tease again. First it goes into the blow-off valve, so the blow-off valve has the source for a boost and then this goes around and down and inevitably into the fuel pump which you might be able to see uh, kind of down there. Right uh, below there is the fuel pump. That's of course was done in an earlier video to allow the fuel pump, the mechanical fuel pump to keep up with the turbo. Uh, as a side note, I've got the a bottle there that's for the alcohol injection. I decided to go with a 
Ace, that's clean fro, Ace, methyl, alcohol, 100%, uh, mixing it with 50-50 uh, distilled water. So that's uh, what's in there now. Uh, still using the number three size nozzle for that, so just enough to keep it uh, working, and I can kind of test it out without dumping tons of, uh, of alcohol in there. So now I'm going to do the heat wrap, uh, especially on the top pipe, mostly because it runs aside a lot of these hoses and then it also runs beside the fuel supply here so i really want to make sure that this one is right, done. So the heat wrap has been applied you can see there it's about a 50 50 overlap so 50 percent of the width overlapped as you go along i use this steel wire just twist it up as a holder for now uh, it has cooked and when it does cook it smokes a lot and it does have a kind of a sweet smell so it's not bad but just keep that in mind when you start it up you're going to have probably some turbo baking and then you're going to have this baking and then maybe some other uh, oils and whatnot that are spilled on things so you're gonna get it quite a bit uh, check for oil leaks uh, specifically the oil drain uh, into the pan and then of course around over where you actually source your oil from uh, i did an initially have a leak i don't think it was tight enough and then same with down in the pan you just got to make sure everything's really tight if you're dealing with an fittings the fittings themselves are probably okay but you do need to make sure that your uh, all your connections are nice and tight uh, beyond that uh, I did end up having a bracket put in here. It's uh, just a piece of metal that's just got some holes in it. It goes off the turbo uh, compressor housing over to the power steering pump. It just allows the whole unit to stay as one piece. This was kind of rattling off to the side because of the weight. I mean, the whole thing is pretty much supported by a donut gasket, so it's not really designed for that extra weight. Plus, it's you know it's a pretty heavy setup. So uh, beyond that, everything looks pretty good. Uh, this wasn't seen. This is new. The um, kick down cable, passing gear cable, is now got a bracket off the firewall to thank my father-in-law for help with that. It was uh, quite a, a task bolting that uh, behind the firewall and then also behind the, uh, the cowl there. So uh, thanks to him for that and all his help this weekend. Beyond that, uh, everything's pretty good. And I think in a future video, you'll get to see it drive. We'll get it uh, dialed up for boost a bit better. I already know it runs well, so you'll be getting that driving video soon. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe on Twitter and Facebook, as well as uh, leaving any comments in the comment section below.